and welcome to another episode of The Screenshot, your go-to destination for everything youth, culture, entertainment, and social issues. We have a very, very special episode for you guys today. It's something a little bit different from what we do, but it does showcase the work of young people in our beautiful, beautiful city. So the lady I'm going to introduce, should I call you a lady? <laughs> call me a lady, please. You're a lady. <laughs> the lady I'm about to introduce, I don't know whether your FYPs are working or not, but if you have not seen her on TikTok in your FYPs, Ah, guys, change whatever it is that you're doing because she's a plug for so many things in our city. So, welcome to the show, Ashley. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm honored. So, do you want to tell our viewers more about yourself? Should I? Have you I done did. your re- Have you have you done your research? I have. So, if you miss <laughs> something, I will know. So, yeah, okay. tell us All a right. little bit about who Ashley is. Okay. So, Ashley is number one, a mother of one, to mm-hmm. a beautiful, amazing five year old little girl. Mm-hmm. Even in my bio, Zulu, am I one? They, they know. <laughs> they, they know. Mm-hmm. And then I'm an artist manager slash content creator. Mm-hmm. And then by study wise, I'm a project manager. So I'm just finishing up my thesis to be qualified to work in Zim. So you're so, just a busy person in general. You know, this really. Is like, too, many, too many titles. About you. Yeah. So, Ashley, I, I know we, we say that behind the scenes, but can you do it for me? Can you do the intro? <laughs> Put me on the spot, yeah, boy. I love that intro. So, but how will I do it now that we're not? Do it. Okay. I want it. My sweet mama can say side family. Mm. <laughs> so yeah, I love it. That's Ashley's uh, TikTok mm-hmm. intro. So it's my sweet mama can say TikTok Mori. Mm. How did you come up with that? I don't know. I think I wanted something that was more me because I'm Shona. Mm. So just a way to greet people, not exactly as Kiwa all the time, mm. but something that's close to home. Mm. And I figured in Shona, it would be easier than what is Salimonani, Lefugile, TikTok. How do you even say that? Yabo. Yabo. Yimoli. Yimoli. Yabo. Mm. So, so, yeah, it was just a... It was just a thing I started one day and then people liked it and then I just ran along with it. So like even now in town, Mang Hamba, mm. like people be like, TikTok! <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just like, that wow, so cool. okay, all right, nice. Salbon. Mm. <laughs> so uh, you mentioned, Oguti, you're the mother of one. Mm-hmm. You also mentioned that you're doing your studies. Mm-hmm. But I want us to talk about two things that you're doing in your life. and right? mm-hmm. Artist management and being a content creator, yes. being an influencer. You know, is it such a big term when people say influencer, especially in our small city? I think it's such a big term. And I think when people hear the word influencer, mm. like especially in Balai, mm. they then think like thousands of people. But then they don't understand what these categories and these about micro, mini and stuff like that. Mm. So and then people say influencers, I go to the celebrity, Chelayo, mm. you know, people that have kind of made it ETC. So it's it's. It's a good term because I think I classify under that, but also it comes with its burdens sometimes. But I always thought the term influencer comes from your ability to influence people to do certain things. Yeah. It's like whether you, you, you do it big or you do it small or whatever. Yeah. It is, it's like when you post something, you post like food reviews, mm-hmm. you post um, Airbnbs or mm-hmm. whatever it is. But when someone actually goes to that place, and they'll be like, I saw it on Ashley's what TikTok. TikTok. Is that not influencing though? That is influencing. That's the definition by of influencing. Actually, is influencer, it? yeah. But then I think pe- I think people they don't understand the difference between a celebrity and an influencer. Okay. Yeah, boy. So <laughs> hey, how do I even narrow it down? Do you know? I don't even know how to narrow it down myself. But then I found okay, influence doesn't necessarily mean huge numbers. It's the mm. ability to sell an idea, to sell exactly. something, a product to people. Mm. So they are kind of influenced by whatever you say. They take what you say seriously. So mm. when I say, oh, let's try to that people can flood and say that. Then I think celebrities are just huge, huge public figures mm. that have kind of made it in whatever way. Because you can't narrow it down and say, celebrity who's doing arts. Who's d- it's just like different industries. So I don't know if that makes sense, but that's my sense. understanding of it, I think. It makes sense. And yeah. I've noticed that um, influencers tend to work with brands, right? Because mm-hmm. they know that these people can what? Can, can push the word. Yes, exactly. your ability to sell an idea. Mm-hmm. Like you said, I like mm-hmm. that part a lot. Ability to sell an idea. <laughs> anyway... So I want us to, 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 to talk about how you started this journey of content creation. Like it was just you and your phone, J1 Danger, like, you know what? Let me do this. I think what for happened? me, you know what happened, Auntie? Because I learned outside. Mm. So before I even left for China, which was like 20, 
I think it should have been like 20, 20 14. Okay. I used to have YouTube because I used to watch like a lot of YouTubers. So I was deep in my YouTube. Um, and then I was like, let me start YouTube. But then YouTube didn't. Eesh. It's a hard space to penetrate. And I think being in Zim also, mm. are my challenges that I think I faced back then, which I don't know are the challenges that people are facing now on YouTube, mm. was, you know, it would take you like a day to upload something. Or network. <laughs> yeah, well, a day to upload something. And mm. then at the end of the day, you upload, you take like all your time, you put into craft, mm. and then like you get like 10 views. It becomes demotivating a bit. It really does. So mm. I started, I started like YouTube because I was leaving for China for school essentially. Mm. And I was like, okay, when I get there, you know, I'll have like people following. Blah. And but content, it didn't. Yeah, exactly. You know, aesthetic content, quiet. aesthetics, mm. different plays. Mm. Tell people about how to come here for school. Mm. And it didn't really work out. And I was like, you know, it's whatever. Forgot about it. Um, and I come from a very creative family because mm. my dad is a professional photographer and videographer mm. for over like 25 years. So I think part of it also was just, it's within me because I'm just a creative <sighs> kid, right? Mm. Then I came back and I think, because my you, I think my TikTok is like a year now. Mm. And how I got onto TikTok is because I said I was an artist manager. I realized with the TikTok is like growing, it's big. So like a lot of artists then were pushing music, pushing sounds and everything was going viral, you know? And I was like, okay, maybe sometimes you, you don't need to be paid by a platform, but you can do it. You can get your sound out there and you never know who bumps into it. Mm. So I started TikTok because I'd always talk to my artists, let's do this, let's do this. And then me, I'm a person who likes to do V11s. Mm. So I was like, okay, you guys are not taking me seriously. I'm going to show you that it can work. And then I just, that's how I basically started doing content. Mm. And then I think in the midst of all of that, people started being serious and like, oh, brands are come, can you do this for us? Can you do this? And then I was like, okay, that's another way of making money, mm. another mm. stream of income, why not? So that's how I started. I never sat down and said, I want to be a content creator. It, just it was happens. just, you know what? Okay, I go out to eat all the time mm. and I see all these mm. nice places that people don't know. Oh, I know this person that can do your hair. I know this, this, let me just put... Let me just document it and see how it grows. And then my TikTok just grew over a year. It was crazy. And I was like, hmm, okay. And she's a plug for a lot of things. Because you know? I think for me, what, what shocks me with my TikTok is I don't have a lot of followers, mm. but I'm like on 750,000 views within a year. Yeah. So I'm like, that's why I say, Wuti, I think influence is not about numbers. Mm. Sometimes, because you can have someone with like 20K, but like what's actually the impact of their... Because what I've also noticed, because Andy, I was talking to you. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm now a glorified Ashley stalker. I need to find out what, what's your account. <laughs> <laughs> so when I was talking to you, I noticed something that some accounts don't really have with their like huge uh, numbers. Engagement, you know, mm -hmm. like people really do engage because it means that you found the content that people yeah. actually want to, mm -hmm. want to view. So I think... It's, I don't know if it's luck because it, you are very lucky to have that because some people just really can't seem to... You know, penetrate that thing where people want to engage with you and talk yeah. to you and say, ah, so this is cool, whatever mm -hmm. it is. So, yeah, because yeah. for me, I think it also took me time. I started understanding like which days are good for me. Mm. And I still do that up to now. I'll wake up. Because if you realize, if you really stalked me, mm. you'd realize I only post on Wednesdays and Saturdays because that's what works for my algorithm. Okay. Right. But sometimes I'll try throw something like on a Monday just to, to see, see. Wuti, mm. am I, is it all in my head? Is mm. it all luck or. <laughs> And then it doesn't work. And, and then it like, doesn't work. And I'm like, back. okay, let me stick to it. Mm, mm. So, yeah. So, I guess. I don't know. Okay. So, let's talk about artist manager. Uh -huh. Like, that's another, that's another, what do they call it? Something around, uh, under your club belt. <laughs> it's cute, guys. Anyway. Yeah, fast. Let's talk about <laughs> you being an artist manager now. Mm -hmm. Like, how did you get into the field? So, essentially, I think how the idea even started um i came on holiday i came on holiday when i like i said i was still in china i came on holiday and um at that time asaf was shooting mambo mm. right so asaf and my brother were like very close friends um and then they just kind of asked me like can you help are you able to help are you and i was like okay i can definitely get like some models i can do makeup like you can see how the day goes you can make sure people eat and stuff because again auntie back in high back in uni are studying project management. So it felt like a project to me, like it has an end and a start. So it's something that I can maneuver and just realize. So that was my first time working with artists, I think, on just let me help. Guapela, I went back to school, came back years later, 
and then I helped again. I think he was shooting back to December. So back to December, I was I wasn't even supposed to be helping. Mm. I was supposed to be part of the people in the music. Part of the girls. Yes, because oh, so different... the car wash. Yeah, oh. but then it was on the rooftop. Oh. So if you saw on the rooftop, there were like different girls or like Pibambe back to December, like different mm. words and stuff like that. So I was because I think they wanted to also have like different girls of different shapes, colors, sizes. Mm. Inclusivity. Something mm. body positivity. Mm. Right? And then I was called to help in the fact that by but by then my daughter was like really tiny. I think she was still breastfeeding. Mm. Um so then I was just like, you know, let me help instead. And I think then he had a manager and then I kinda just helped and everyone was like, you know what, you're kinda good at this thing. Mm. Why don't you pursue it? Wapela once again. And then I think fast forward like two, three years later, um, he got his deal. And then when he's got his deal, um, they needed to be someone who would, um, I don't want to talk about him because it's not about him, right? Mm. But I just have to say, um, he had a manager that was outside and then the manager that was outside kind of needed someone who was around to navigate everything and help and assist. Mm. And then I think he had candidates and then I happened to be the person that got the job. So that's how it essentially started. And then when I got onto it, because again, I'm a perfectionist, I was like, you know what? I kind of don't know what I'm doing because like it's artist management. Like what do I know about? I'm an artist, you know? And then I shot my shots, got a scholarship under Music Business of Africa. So it's owned by Godwin Tom, who's currently the managing director for Sony Music Publishing Nigeria. And then he's worked with Abu Square and stuff like that. Then I kind of learned more about music from event touring, artist management, royalty, all the shabams. Mm -hmm. And then that's how I just fully got myself into the artist management thing. Because I didn't understand doing something that I don't know or to the best of my abilities. So, yeah, made it. And I think they showed us for a thousand people and then 150 women were were, were chosen because it was more of like a women empowerment thing and then i think it was two of us from zimbabwe it should be me and rulo because then i met her on the program and i was like oh hi i was like wow okay cool mm. so how's it going now the artist management i think now i'm seasoned you know you're now, now I'm super seasoned like you're now a name now like i know what i'm doing like i can mm. set i can negotiate i can talk to promoters mm. i can try my level base to find spots for artists and I think currently right now I'm working um, I'm working with Peggy, Peggy mm -hmm. Dube. Yes. Peggy Dube and I come from way back. Mm -hmm. And then now I've got Kelvin Madula who is a bunch of things like me. Mm -hmm. From being an actress, from being an actor, to a host, to so many other things. And then currently I also have DJ Tino. And because Kanye is my brother, I consult for him. Mm -hmm. I don't manage him full time, but I consult for him. Okay. Because you guys were like oh, biased. So... <laughs> Am I not lying? You are not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so, yeah. Tell me about being a, um, before we wrap up the artist manager thingy, mm -hmm. is it uh, in Bulawayo, right? Yeah. You know, we've got a really small city and mm -hmm. our music is not really blooming as much as I would like it to be, you know. it's mm -hmm. We've got really good artists. Like, you yeah. know, it's so frustrating sometimes when you listen to our own sounds and you're like, this should be bigger than it is right yeah. now. And, and there you are, a manager, because I know you feel more for your artists because mm -hmm. you work with them closely. The process, you're there, you're so invested in what they're doing. Mm -hmm. and, and also, uh, you're a woman. So I wanted to know, Guti, how is the, how is the, industry like as a woman who's managing uh artists in a city that is kind of small it's kind of small mm. i think number one being a female mm. in general in the industry is not something easy because mm. then you know there's the exploitation of artists from promoters mm. you know well-known promoters that you agree on something and then when it's the day of the show things are completely different but now when you're trying to voice it people say oh you're being emotional because you're a woman do you get what I'm saying? You're on your period. Yeah, it's yeah. a lot of things like that that I get. I feel like also it's even trickier because it's a male-dominated industry and then you're there being this female. And a lot of people when I was starting used to be like, what does Ashley know? How does she know about artist manager? Blah, blah, blah. Even when you're getting into the space, people feel like you need to have like 10 years look in the industry for mm -hmm. you to be even taken seriously. And then I just feel like in terms of music in Bulawayo, I think we're not as united as any other. I'll use Harare. Mm. I don't know if it's the money situation or they've got better access to funds. 
But I just feel like when it comes to Bulayo, it's more of like we don't come together and sit down and support each other. Mm. It's about, oh, this person thinks they're doing better than me. Mm. Mm. Or this person thinks they're like that. But if you see with Harare artists, they've got like this unity thing. Mm. So once someone drops or whatever, all of them are going to just ride on the wagon because they know Wuti, when my turn comes, I need that person also to like repost and then them reposting, that means their audience gets in. So mm. I feel like with Bulayo, it's just see see as culture and we don't yeah and we don't want to support we're better off supporting international acts than saying okay so i think it's that's like the it number. takes away something from you i don't know when I, someone don't, I don't know but for me i don't feel like it's about money or access of course obviously a huge part of everything that artists do require money mm. the music videos the promos the everything but i feel like if we come together as a collective mm. I'm, a, I'm a artist managers but we won't get artists whatever and then we kind of just repost our work we then start to make a sound for ourselves because like you're saying there's some pretty amazing artists like yes 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 for sure pretty amazing Baby artists. Where, for instance you know you know what i'm saying like pretty amazing artists when you're like wow and when they go out there people are like oh I'm not long, I'm not mm. but then also what i've seen being part of an artist manager is even our own artists get more love outside than in Mbulai. So it's a bulawa your thing, essentially. Like if we could just really harmony and just support ourselves, I think would go way, way, way better. And if we could get people to like even teach artists more about just um how to secure their own future. Because I think a lot of them are willing to do free things just to say, I need to get my name out there. Mm. Then they're exploited by promoters because for a promoter to put you on stage, mm. they're getting something. Mm. So at least like make sure you know your rights and you'd be shocked to find out which is so many artists are not even signed like Zimura and stuff where they can even say, okay, I'll make royalties from the, mm. from the craft I'm putting in, you know, I'm sacrificing so much to shoot a music video. Let me make something out of it. But I'm a So I don't Maybe know. Maybe but they're just not educated. In, in but I once, I once, I once spoke to someone as well last time when we were having, we were having like a little, debate about it mm. they were like but we come to Bulao and we say there's a free workshop sign up we'll give you money for transport mm. we'll give you food and people don't show up ah uh, this is something i do with all the time you or you can't so, yeah, well, young so people maybe it's, showing atti- up. maybe it's the attitude mm, mm. because even people that would want that's why some of the things would be in harare mm. because harare people will take it like and grab the opportunity to their life yeah true. so i think it's, it's a bunch of things being a, a female in the industry is not easy because also people are trying to exploit you but the industry is just weird man it's just you know and I some things we don't want to talk about them on tv it's not, but it's like just, another episode to go about yeah, the industry <laughs> people and obviously also these i think also there are people that take advantage of females within yeah, the true. industry from your producers to your promoters to your people making beats so Umfaz all the time has to like super sacrifice or whatever or some they now want to date you just for you to get something out of it. So it's not an easy it's not an easy industry to be in and if you don't stand your 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 your, your ground and you don't have morals, I think it's so easy to be lost. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I hear you. So now let's talk about your your personal life, mm-hmm. actually. Uh, first, we'll start off with your personal life mixed with your professional life. Like, mm-hmm. when it comes to friendships, genuine friendships mm-hmm. in this industry, is it is it possible? Like, how, what is your what is your circle like of friends? Do you have genuine friendships? I've got genuine friendships. One mm. thing about me, I'm lucky. I've got friendships started dating as old as like fifteen years mm. from high school. Okay, that's nice because I've heard people say, "What do you you start getting friends from nowhere?" Because you're not obviously uh, no, obviously because also you're known to some extent. Mm. I think me also blowing up on Twitter, like ah, I just started getting unnecessary friends. Mm. Hey, hi, <laughs> trying to hang out, mm. trying to, and it's like people are like ah, but you're me, but for me, I, I, industry, I don't think I have friends in the industry. Oh, you just have your friends. That you I just have my friends that mm. do different things. And okay. then obviously, people like Abba Biggie, who can be my, who's, who is my artist, but that's like my little sister. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So that's not even like, I can't even consider a friend because we're now on me. That's mm. family, mm. right? But to say I have like friends, friends in the industry, mm. I don't think so. I think mixing business and pleasures just doesn't, doesn't work. work. Yeah. And relationships? Uh-huh. What Get about your that? Leg <laughs> I, I don't know, guys. No <laughs> ring, so 
<laughs> All right, so I want us to play a little game. Mm-hmm. I want us to play. I feel like this is gonna be a tricky game. It's not gonna be tricky. It's just four rounds, ne? Okay. Of smash, marry, or kill. Okay. okay. All right. So we'll start off easy, you know. You know. Because I feel like it's a lesser one to that I know. <laughs> Hi, the first round. I don't feel. I you I you are busy, but. I can't say what I'm saying. Maybe you've gotten a DM. Okay, first one. Smash, marry, or kill. Mm-hmm. Trey songs. Mm-hmm. Lucky Blue Smith. You know who that is. Right? Nara Smith's husband. Oh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> and Claire, August, you say that. August, they'll say now. Smash, marry, or kill. I will kill Trey songs. Why? Because I feel like he's a womanizer. Okay, you were killing Trey songs. And then... I will smash August. Okay. And then marry Nara's Smith's husband because he's always cooking and what, what, what. So is he cooking? I am not going to I am not going to I am from scratch. Now it gets interesting. Mm-hmm. Smash, marry, or kill. Sis K. Mm-hmm. Ben Chest. Oh my God. Shadai. Oh my God. <laughs> what? Do you have any killing Shadai? <laughs> Without a doubt. Like. Give me the can. <laughs> okay, we're killing Shadaya. I'm killing Shadaya. Mm-hmm. And then, oh my god. Mrs. K and Benches. Smash, I will marry Mrs. K and then okay. I'll smash Benches, I guess. Okay, cool. I'm leaving the base for last. Smash. Yikes. Smash, marry, or kill. You mm-hmm. know, you mentioned them. Mm. Kelvin Madula. <laughs> okay. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> K Breezy. Mm-hmm. You know? And Chris Brown. I would definitely marry Chris Brown. <laughs> I'd have to kill Calvin. We work together. No, it's, it's not gonna kill. work. And then I'll smash, smash K Breezy. Okay. Yeah. Let's be like K Breezy. Let's <laughs> smash you. <laughs> okay, last one. Girl edition. Mm-hmm. Okay. Peggy you with? Uh huh. <laughs> Princess Lola. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Lo Mexi and. <laughs> You are so dirty for doing I this. I did say I will leave the base for last. So, smash, marry, or kill? I'll definitely marry Lolo. Like, uh, ah, that's my best. That's, that's my, your soulmate. That's my soulmate. Uh, <laughs> so, I have to die between Upeg and Lomex. Oh, You're paling a confidence. I want us to go, Ashley. I want us to go. I'll have to, I'll have to smash Bex. <laughs> kill Peggy. And kill Peggy. Cause I can't smash Peggy. That's like my little sister. That's, oh, that's, 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 that is, that's incest. Uh, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, Did but like, so? Ish, but why am I killing her? <laughs> Can we just not keep her around? Okay. Well, yeah, we'll keep her around, right? Knock off her kneecaps or something. Okay. <laughs> Maybe so she's alive. Child, two feet. I'm, t- <laughs> so I'm amputating you <laughs> oh my no, God. No. Ashley, thank you so much for coming through. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. And for for everything that you said, I feel like a lot of people will learn something. So lay wisdom. You know, you said you're now seasoned and, mm-hmm. and you're not playing. You know, you're not looking at Kakasi about your answers and stuff. And and I'm so happy that you managed to express the challenges that you also face mm-hmm. in the space because it's not always glamorous. Bella. Yeah, it's You smart. know, when I want to enter a space, I always think, you know. It's not. Wow. And I feel like also being out there in the public, like a lot of bullying. So mm-hmm. like a lot of environment will help you. Your confidence. Mm-hmm. Yako. Like there's a lot of trolls, bro. Like mm-hmm. on Twitter and stuff and it doesn't come easy because you're genuinely just trying to get by your day and someone's just having a full day with you mm. so so a thick skin also i feel like a thick skin is needed because i mean from the onset like a lot of people that followed me i think were just trolls Je- who does that i think they were just trolls because also the way i rapidly just grew on 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 x was just weird Oh, uh, since you mentioned that, can you please leave us your social media handle so we can troll you some more? <laughs> I'm joking. Ga- I, our family is just way. full of love. Ashley, so. on every platform, I'm so here. Ashley, bad. What? 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 Ashley, what? No. So I'm not going to So I'm not account. Ashley, Kanyane, I mean, when I'm a tr- you know troll okay. accounts. I have a lot of troll accounts. Damn, like made it, fella. If you stalk me enough, <laughs> like, I will see. There's a lot of troll accounts, and I feel like a lot of blogs as well steal my content, but. Oh well. It's a story for another day. Story for another day. Anyway, thank you for coming through. 
Thank you uh, for having me. And everyone me. at home, thank you so much for watching this episode. And please leave some love for Ashley Bayed. And watch, watch Peggy was video. Ashley was was shouting at us on TikTok. Please, guys. Scanning in the mainstream. I can't stay. Yo, Bayed. So check out Peggy where I can't stay. It's a very dope music video. I have to say. And it's got a beautiful voice, by the way. Thank you. And thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys next week.